Hi there, welcome to the first in the video series, Telescope Basics. My name is David Fuller, host of the Eyes on the Sky weekly stargazing series that can be found on eyesonthesky.com. In this video, I'll explain the various types of telescopes and what you need to know about them to either make the best choice for purchasing one or how to better use the telescope you may have right now. So let's get started. First, we will look at the three major types of amateur telescopes, refractors, reflectors, and compound or catadioptric telescopes. When most people think telescope, they probably imagine a refractor like this one. They have a large glass lens at one end through which light passes and refracts or bends the light to a focal point. As the light passes the focal point here, we place an eyepiece, which then focuses the light into a magnified image we can see. Though usually a star diagonal is placed here to bounce the light 90 degrees for more comfortable viewing. So far so good, right? A reflector, on the other hand, is often called a Newtonian telescope. These can be mounted on equatorial or Dobsonian mounts. And yes, this type of telescope was named after Isaac Newton, who first came up with this telescope concept. As the name implies, light is reflected off of a mirror in this kind of telescope, usually placed at the bottom of a tube. As it is reflected, it is towards a focal point as well, but note where that happens, near the top of the tube. That makes it hard to place an eyepiece there as both the focuser and your head would block incoming light. So a reflector uses a secondary mirror, a small, diagonally shaped flat mirror to bounce the light out of the side of the tube like this, where it enters the focuser and reaches the eyepiece. The third type of telescope is a compound telescope or catadioptric. Cata what? I know, that's a big word. It means an optical system that involves both the reflecting and refracting of light in order to reduce aberration. So this schmidt cassegrain telescope, for example, utilizes a corrector lens on the front of the telescope, a strongly curved primary mirror at the back, and then another outwardly curved mirror in the middle of the corrector lens before light finally goes through the center of the back of the telescope to the eyepiece. It basically can take a very long focal length light path and fold it into a shorter tube. There are other versions of catadioptric scopes, schmidt cassegrains and Maxitov cassegrains being the most prominent amateur types available. Let's take a quick overview of the strengths and weaknesses of each. For refractors, here are some advantages. Unobstructed design and ease of manufacture allows for theoretically better optical quality Eyepiece location is convenient in smaller models. They tend to be portable in apertures of 100 millimeters or less and are easy to aim. Some disadvantages include chromatic aberration in achromats where not all wavelengths of light focus in the same place. Apochromatic designs, though overcoming chromatic aberration, are usually three to five times as expensive. In longer focal lengths, the long tubes can sway in the wind or on inexpensive mounts, and larger models place eyepieces uncomfortably low. Reflectors have their own set of advantages. No chromatic aberration, easier and less expensive to make in larger apertures, faster focal ratio systems provide wide fields of view, light grasp in larger models is excellent, and the cost per inch of aperture is best. But they also have their drawbacks. The optical aberration coma occurs in faster models unless specialized eyepieces or correctors are used. Light loss due to multiple mirrors is greater than refractors. Central obstruction due to secondary mirror can cause diffraction and contrast lost. Larger models can be bulky and heavy and the eyepiece can sometimes be in awkward positions. Catadioptrics likewise have pluses and minuses. On the plus side, they reduce optical aberrations to minimal levels, provide good light gathering power, 
eyepieces are generally in very convenient locations and they offer excellent portability. On the downside though, cats are the most expensive per inch of aperture, have the greatest amount of light loss due to multiple lenses and mirrors, often have the largest central obstruction, tube currents due to sealed systems can cause poor images before fully cooled to outdoor temperatures. Now let's look at some other aspects of telescopes. In part two of this series, I'll talk about magnification and focal ratio. Or if you're ready to see what's up in the night sky already, see the weekly night sky videos at eyesonthesky.com. Thanks for watching. I hope that has provided you with a good overview of the types of telescopes used for amateur astronomy. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up.